Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials bringing us from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number 23, or it's video number 4 in the subsection on the Fresnel equations. Specifically, I'm going to derive the reflection and transmission coefficients at oblique incidence. Now, there are two, we'll say, cases which you analyze here, and the case I'm going to analyze is when the electric field is polarized parallel to the plane of incidence. And I'll discuss more about that in a moment. The previous videos to this which are relevant are as follows. Number 22, I discussed Snell's law. In number 20, 21, I derived the reflection coefficient for normal incidence, and I discussed reflection and transmission at normal incidence and in video number 20. Okay, so we're going to discuss, like I said, the Fresnel equations, and they're one of the important results from classical optics, and uh, I suppose a lot of the the optics which you will use will uh, will be derived from the results of the Fresnel equations. So the first thing we need to do is just think about what we're, what exactly we're going to try and derive. We're talking about when the electric field is polarized in the plane of incidence only. So what this means is that the magnetic field is only in the plane of the interface. So in driving these it's often very difficult to actually picture or visualize what's going on. So I'm going to try my best to help you out here. Uh, you can also check out Hecht. He's got some very good H-E-C-H-T. He's got some very good diagrams in his book. So you can check out that if you're looking for diagrams to help you visualize what's going on. So let's think about, first of all, the plane of incidence. So let's imagine we have a plane of incidence here like this. And our plane of incidence, let's call this the i-hat unit vector direction, let's say the x-axis. This is the z-axis. And the positive y-axis, let's say, goes out like this. So this is the plane of incidence. So the plane of incidence is in the xz plane. Now, we also, we're trying to imagine what happens when the light comes in, hits off an interface, and some of it's reflected and some of it is transmitted. So the interface, let's imagine, is a sheet of glass or something like that. So the sheet of glass is going to be perpendicular to it perpendicular, excuse me, to the plane of incidence, and might look something like this. Note, of course, that this is going to be in the xy plane. So this is the, uh, this is the interface itself, or the plane of the interface. So what's going to happen now is some light is going to be incident upon this particular setup. Somewhere, let's say, let's define the origin as being here, and we want to see what happens. So first of all, we're going to get an incident wave, we're going to get a reflected wave, and we're going to get something transmitted. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to clean up this, just so we, we, get, uh, we don't get confused. So the black is our incident transmitted and reflected wave. So I'm going to draw the normal here as well, like that. Okay, here's our normal, and let's redraw, that's our transmitted wave. I know it's not drawn very well because we all know that the transmitted wave is usually refracted. So this is the incident electric field, or the, the incident, incident wave, I'll just draw, I'll just use the letter I for incident. This is reflected, and this is transmitted. What we need to do then is analyze what the electric and magnetic fields are doing. So let's suggest that the electric field is polarized in the plane of incidence. So it's polarized in the xz plane. That's where the electric field is. Now because we know that the magnetic field, well the direction of the magnetic field is the, the, propagation, oh, the propagation vector across the electric field, that means that the magnetic field is in, is going to be in this direction here along the y-axis like that. So looking at this the electric field okay let's say for example the electric field is here. So the electric field is in the xz plane and it's perpendicular to the propagation vector like that. So it comes in it bounces off the origin and some of it's reflected. The 
orientation of the electric field, let's say, doesn't change. So this is the electric field reflected. This is the electric field incident. And we also have our transmitted electric field looking something like this. All right. So if you're with me so far, you're doing well because this is, I suppose, really the hard part is trying to visualize it. And once you can visualize it, uh, the rest should follow pretty quickly. So bear with me just while I clean up this diagram. So the next thing we need to do is to start working with components because we need to, we need to apply the electromagnetic boundary conditions, which are, I suppose, their um, results from Maxwell's equations. So just I nearly finished there now. All right, so let's just redraw this with the with a minimum of information at the start. So let's suggest that this is the x z plane. Okay, we're going to leave out the y plane, the the y axis for the moment. So this is z, and this is x. So the electric field is is polarized in the plane of incidence. So I'll go to green. So let's say the the wave comes in. This is the propagation vector incident. This is the propagation vector accident or reflected and or reflected, excuse me, and this is transmitted. So this is transmitted, this is reflected, and this is incident. Now we know from Snell's law, or excuse me, the law of refraction, sorry, <laughs> we know from the law of reflection that the incident and ref and and reflected angles are the same. Now we need to note, of course, that they're taken with respect to the normal, which I've drawn here. So I'm just going to draw that in straight away. And this is the, er, the transmitted angle. Now what we need to do is just break down our electric field into its components. So here's the electric field perpendicular to the propagation vector incident, perpendicular to the propagation vector reflected, and perpendicular to the propagation vector transmitted. So to be honest, I find the uh, th sometimes working out the components like this difficult enough, but it's gonna write the answers, right? So let's say we call this angle here alpha, and we call this angle here beta. If we do that, we have the following angles. There's a 90 degrees. This is alpha. We have theta incident here, like that. We have theta incident, and we have alpha down here. And on, on the reflected wave, so we're going to have theta incident, we're going to have alpha and our 90 degrees, and we're also going to have alpha up here with theta. And finally, what we're going to have is we're going to have beta up here like this. with theta transmitted. And we're going to have theta, theta transmitted and beta here again. Now, please forgive me if you find that a bit boring and a bit slow. It's just something I find uh, helps to go, especially with the Fresnel equations, to do it out step by step like that. So what I'm going to do now is just clear it up and we're going to draw the actual answers to these particular components. So if we just look at that, what you'll find is as follows. I'm going to draw it my medium. So if we look at the transmitted wave, what we would have had is as follows. We would have had minus E transmitted, E zero transmitted times the sine of theta transmitted. And that is in the k hat direction. We have a positive E transmitted cos theta transmitted. Over 
here for the reflected wave, we have a negative in the k hat direction. And it's going to be negative e reflected, e zero reflected sine theta. And of course, we also have the x component or the i hat component, which is going to be negative. And this one is negative e zero reflected cos theta incident. And finally, then, if we look at the incident wave, we're going to have negative in the k hat direction. So it's minus e0 sub i sine theta i k hat. And finally, we're going to have in the i hat direction, it's going to be e0 sub i cos theta i i hat in the positive direction. Like that. Okay, so that is the majority of the work done. The rest just follows through some simple manipulation. Now, just to remind ourselves, we know that in the electromagnetic boundary conditions, we talk about something being perpendicular or parallel to the, the actual interface. So you need to make sure that you don't get confused with being perpendicular to the interface or parallel to the interface and perpendicular or parallel per to the plane of incidence, which is in this case the XZ plane. So what that means is that the electric field, the, the perpendicular component, if you think about it for the electric field, is going to be in the K hat direction. And the reason that is, is because it's, it's perpendicular to the plane of incidence, or excuse me, it's perpendicular to the interface but the interface is in the xy plane and the electric field is in the xz plane so the only the perpendicular component then must be z so for applying similar logic you find the parallel component must be i hat now if we talk about the magnetic component perpendicular it must be zero. And the reason is, well, the magnetic component must be perpendicular to the electric field. So magnetic component is in J hat, but we know that the perpendicular component must be K hat. Therefore, the perpendicular component for the magnetic field is zero. And finally, the parallel component for the magnetic field is going to be J hat. So the next thing we need to do is look at the electromagnetic boundary conditions. And yeah, we just need to look at those and apply them to what we have at the moment. So in order to do, I suppose before we do that, what I'm gonna do is write down the equations of all the fields. So I'm going through this step by step because it's something I think is, is worthwhile doing. Okay, so the electric field incident is going to be E0 incident times the exponential, the incident propagation vector dotted with R minus omega T. And if you look at what we have on the left-hand side of the page, we need to have a cos theta I, I hat minus sine theta I K hat. And note, of course, that this, the cos is the parallel component and the k, the k hat is the perpendicular component. Okay. The electric field reflected is E0 reflected times the exponential, the propagation vector dotted with the position vector minus omega t and once again, what we have this time 
is minus cos theta i i hat minus sine theta t j hat. Excuse me, sine theta r. Sorry, I just so this is sine theta i, like that. So our reflected, we're going to get minus cos theta i i hat minus sine theta i k hat. So a reflected wave. And the transmitted wave then finally, E0 or T. E to the I, the propagation vector dotted with the position vector minus omega t and we have the following we have cos theta t i hat minus sine theta t k hat okay now note by the way that the magnetic field is for, for the incident the reflected and the transmitted is the same as these without the cos and sine because we know it's only in the j hat direction and we also know that the magnitude of the electric field is c times the magnitude of the magnetic field so what we do is we sub that straight in so it's going to be the same as these and we'll see that in a moment now the next thing we need to realize is that all the exponentials are equal and I discussed that in the video on Snell's law. So for that reason, we can get rid of all of those. And we just need to discuss the actual amplitudes and the cosines and sines. Okay, so let's write down what the, let's write down what the actual boundary conditions are. So the boundary conditions say the following thing. So epsilon one, E one, perpendicular, or epsilon one, let's say that's, E1 perpendicular is equal to epsilon 2 E2 perpendicular. We know that E1 parallel is equal to E2 parallel. We know that B1 perpendicular is equal to B2 perpendicular. And finally, that B1 parallel over mu1 is equal to b2 parallel over mu2 okay so I'm going to name the equation I'm going to number the equations as follows this is going to be 1 2 3 and 4 like that what I'm going to do is apply the trigonometric functions which I have here onto our boundary conditions and this is what we're going to get So for our E perpendicular, we're going to get the following. Epsilon one is constant. We're going to have minus E zero incident, sine theta incident. We're going to have minus E zero reflected sine theta incident. And that's going to be equal to epsilon 2. Well, minus epsilon 2, E0 transmitted, sine theta transmitted. I'm going to call that, I'm going to rename that now as equation 1. So then looking at the parallel components, we get E0i times cos theta i minus e0 r cos theta i is equal to e0 t cos theta t and 
that's equation number two. The B perpendicular, which equation number three is zero. And looking at B parallel then, we have, if we sub in for, for B as being E over C, we get the following, one over mu one V one, outside of E zero incident, plus E zero reflected, And that's going to be equal to 1 over mu 2 v2 multiplied multiply by e0 transmitted. I'm going to call that equation 4. So now what we need to do is manipulate the four of these and to solve for e0 transmitted and e0 reflected. I'm going to tell you straight out that we won't need equation 1 and obviously we won't need equation 3. So if you want, you can write those down uh, because in this, I'm going to rub them out here. So what I'm going to do is we can rearrange and we can get equation five is as follows. It's E0 incident is equal, or excuse me, is equal to alpha times E0 transmitted plus E0 reflected. Now that's valid when I make the following substitution. When I call alpha cos theta transmitted over cos theta, cos theta incident. And I'm going to make another substitution that beta is equal to mu1 v1 over mu2 v2. So I'm going to call this particular equation number five. Next, if we look at equation four and we manipulate that, we get E0 incident is e plus, excuse me, E0 reflected is going to be equal to beta E0 transmitted. I'm gonna call that equation six. I can rearrange equation six to have E0 reflected is equal to beta times E0 transmitted minus E0 incident. And we call that equation seven. And finally, we can rearrange equation six again to get E0 transmitted is equal to E0 incident over beta plus E0 reflected over beta. And we're gonna call that equation eight. Now, there are only two more steps to do. You plug equation seven into five, and you rearrange, and you plug equation eight into five, and you rearrange. And I'm gonna tell you straight out, the answer that you get is, uh, actually, I'll call that, I'll put that onto a new page. We get E0 transmitted is equal to twice E0 incident divided by alpha plus beta. And you multiply that. Oh, you don't multiply that actually because you can often just take out the E0 Y. And finally you get E0 reflected is equal to E0 incident. And you multiply that by alpha minus beta over alpha plus beta. These are known as the Fresnel equations for when the electric field is polarized in the plane of incidence. Notice the following thing, that the transmitted wave is always in phase. Now why is that? Well, alpha and beta are greater than one, and as a result, this expression is always positive. And as a result, we always have the transmitted wave in phase with the incident wave. However, if you look at the reflected wave, in the case, in the case that alpha is greater than beta, the reflected wave is in phase. However, in the case that alpha is less than beta, the reflected wave is out of phase. 
and it's out of phase with the incident wave by pi radians or 180 degrees. So just very quickly to visualize that, if the wave is coming in like this, then it's going out, it comes out like this. Okay, I know that was quite heavy, but uh, that, there was a lot of work done there. Sometimes that's difficult for people. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you can give me a comment please in the box below.